Uh, good morning ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ali and today I'm going to give you guys a quick tutorial on how to use Autodesk Inventor to uh, make a simple gear assembly. Alright, <clears throat> so you'll open uh, Autodesk Inventor right here and this is the screen you'll most likely see. And in order to access uh, the built-in gear functions, uh, we want to start with an assembly. Okay. So when you open up the assembly, uh, over here you're given the... This tab right here, design. This tab is actually not available in if you make a part. So over here, you have different options that help you design things with pre-built calculations. And one of the options is actually gears, right? So you can design spur gears, worm gears, or big gears. Um, so today we're going to do spur gear. So you select that. Now, as soon as you press that, the first thing it will say is you need to save this assembly before you move on. All right. So. And on my desktop, I have created a file called Gear Files, and you can see this here. This is where we're at, and this is where I'm going to save uh, this gear design assembly. So let's call it uh, Gear One. Cool. So as soon as you start that, this pop up uh, it comes up, and over here you have different options that will help you design. This is pretty much like a guide. You, uh, you need to look at this as something that's going to help you, not something that should confuse you. And if it does confuse you, uh, you just need to spend a little bit more time with it, and um, before you know it, you'll have it figured out. All right, so <clears throat> here is, uh, this, this is kind of like the error box. If everything is working okay, everything will be blue, and, uh, and these are the parameters that you can change. So number of teeth, for example. Um, you can select how you want to design or what what you want the computer to spit out. If you want the computer to spit out number of teeth, right? You select that and you fill in everything else that's in white. You, and for example, number of teeth here, you actually cannot change change any of this because that's what you want the computer to, to calculate for you. So we'll set that on number of teeth because we want the computer to calculate how many number of teeth we need. So we want the desired gear ratio. This is where you can design your gear ratio. And let's say we want a gear ratio of 1 to 3, right? And uh, here are actually standard options that you have. So this, this is kind of like more engineering terminology, right? So we hit 1 to 3, and it will automatically uh, set this number out for us. Let's keep it there. All right. So internal, and external. So if you select internal, it'll create like um, a um, planetary gear set where you have a ring with a planet gear inside of it. So we're gonna unselect that because we just want to have two regular gears touching at their outer diameters. So here's uh, other options that you can select, like diameter of pitch, which is number of teeth per inch or whatnot. So in the center distances, we want the the gears to be the center of the gears to be three inches from one another. Okay, and uh, we're gonna keep this. Let's keep this at twenty-five. Now, um, let's say we want to change the number of teeth that we have. Okay, so we will select uh, center distances, right? And then change the number of teeth. Let's say we want to have at least a hundred and seventy teeth, right? And then. Obviously, gear number one, we want to have 170 teeth, and gear number two, we want to have the corresponding number of teeth to work with it. So all you have to do is press calculate, and it will do the math for you. So it's pretty much saying, with a die gear ratio of 1 to 3, a diameter of pitch of 25 per inch, you need to change your center distance to this, and your number of teeth to this, right? and this is how your gear will work, and it says uh, your design, design is good to go. So let's say that we just want it to calculate number of teeth because we want to give it other parameters. Let, let's we want this to be actually three inches. Excuse me. So one third, twenty-five, and then three inches apart. So it will calculate the number of teeth based on what we give it. So you hit calculate, and there we go. All right. So it's saying this needs to have one hundred thirteen teeth, and gear number two needs to have thirty-seven. All right. Now, <clears throat> when you have this right here, um, you will hit preview, right? And then preview will allow you to uh, look at the dimensions of gear one and gear two, right? So gear one has a diameter of 
4.52 inches, right? So that's this one right here. So obviously the internal diameter, external diameter, and the, the average diameter, which would be this line, um, is, is all shown here. And this is the information you need later on. Maybe, and gear number two has a diameter of 1.481 inches, okay? So now if you wanna see how the teeth mesh, right? Uh, you just hit this option and it shows you how these gears will interact. Now, <clears throat> um, this angle right here that you see that's created is this angle right here. So let's increase that angle to 30, right? Hit calculate and see it, it changes things and it's saying that things are not working. So let's go back to the original thing that we set it in. So here are my two gears and this is just the pinion um, which is the, the one gear and the gear is the other one that's just terminology and it's comparing them to the racks right and if you hit play over here you can see how these teeth will interact and you can zoom out and zoom in so gear number one gear number two okay so now let's say you're worried about how these teeth here interfere with each other and you don't want it to like rub or break or start making noise and these options are here, right? Uh, the unit tooth size, and you can you can change these to whatever. So I like to keep this on the lowest as possible, the addendum uh, for both gears, right? This is gear number one and gear number two. You can change as well, and I like to increase the clearance to one of the highest as possible for for both gears, and uh, same with the root fillet. Okay, <clears throat> so. Then you press OK, right? Boom. And let's see, it'll do some math, and hopefully it will spit out just one gear, right? So now let me press Escape on that and go back. <laughs> so if you go back to here, if you press, press the spur gear, all our options are still here. So now in gear one and gear two, so gear one, component that means create a gear gear two component that means create a gear for that so if we hit okay right everything we haven't changed anything we just told it to create two gears then you can see that it creates two gears for us right so now we notice that one gear is not as wide as the other okay and there's also a quick way to to, to fix that so i'm gonna hit escape so let's go back <clears throat> and here is where you can create the face width so let's say we want both gears to be 0.5 inches wide, right? And that should be better. So now we're going to select no component on gear 2 and component on gear 1. So we're just going to create one gear at a time, right? And so that's this buddy. So we'll click that. Now the first thing that you import in assembly, as you can see right here um, with the little pin mark, that just means that's grounded. So you can't really move it, right? You can't move or rotate it. So you'll do this and then hit grounded and then it'll unground it for you and now you're actually able to move this part, okay? So let's import the other gear. So since we imported gear one, we wanna make no model and we wanna open gear two and then we press component and hit okay, right? And this is just this thing that comes up and I just click okay, that actually is uh, telling you that it's making these files. And here we go. There's our second gear. Now, <clears throat> so you are pretty much done. And uh, because it's, so if you look at here, <clears throat> you can see these things that the computer made. And this is actually the actual part, right? Uh, the actual part file. So if you double click it here, you'll be able to, ab able to extrude and change, change things here. Um, So and now from here on, you can uh, assemble things the way you want to. And this is how you actually make gears that perfectly mesh up with one another. So I'm going to assemble them real quickly for you um, <clears throat> and do a simulation. So over here, I'll select this gear and I'm going to change it to a different color. All right, that's a nice one. And this one will make orange. Oh, excuse me. Highlight it and then select the orange color. Boom. Okay, so now we have these two. And they live happily ever after. All right, so let's press assembly. Okay, now constraint. 
you can constrain things and you should in order for them to work because that's the whole point of an assembly. So <clears throat> this is the origin for the x, y coordinates that are the global ones. So that means this is absolute within respect to everything. And this right here, forget the first origin, go to the origin that's with the part. And these are local coordinate systems for one gear at a time. This is for the orange gear, for example. So what we're going to do is take, we're going to press constrain and then this will pop up. And then we want to just create a mate. So what we're going to mate is the x-axis of the orange gear. So the first option here, first gear, first thing that we're going to select is the x-axis of the first gear, I mean of the orange gear, and this is what you can see here. And we're going to mate that with the, uh, oh, let's select the z-axis instead. I apologize. The z-axis of the orange gear, and we're going to mate that with the z-axis of uh, the global coordinate system. And here's the offset, right? If you want a perfect line, we press 0 and hit apply. And now this should be sliding around the z-axis of the global coordinate system, right? But that's not good enough because it's still sliding back and forth. I mean, obviously it can rotate, but it's still sliding back and forth. So the next thing we can do is let's constrain the, let me zoom in here. So let's constrain the XY plane of the gear with the XY plane of the global coordinate system. And we're gonna offset that by zero inches. Something happened. Okay, let's try again. So the XY plane of the orange gear with the XY of the global coordinate system. And the offset, we want it to be zero. Okay. Said okay. So now it won't slide anywhere, but it will rotate based off the constraint that we gave it. Right. So if you happen to import this into MATLAB or wanted to import this into MATLAB, it would be, a, I would greatly recommend <coughs> using the, um, the planes and axes to uh, to constrain parts together. Now, now it's uh, gear gear two's turn, right? The blue gear. So, it's, uh, so we're done with the first one. So we can minimize everything here. We'll open open this up, and this is obviously the part, and we want the origins of this part. So, kind of same story. Um, we want to mate the z-axis of the blue gear with the z-axis. Um, that is the global coordinate. So now we want it to be perfectly in line. We want it to be somewhat apart from one another. And you remember um, when we create these gears, we wanted them to be three inches apart from one another, right? So if you hit three inches in here, you will see that it is actually correct. And if you, let's say you happen to forgot that, all you'd have to do is uh, right click here and then select this edit option and hit preview right and you can see or you can see what center distance you set in here and that's actually the number that you need to select to offset um, your gear however this guy is still as you can see it will, it will slide back and forth you know and um, it's still not perfectly constrained so another thing we need to do is get the xy plane of this and plane of the global coordinate system hit apply and OK so now uh -huh. as you can see it's rotating around right but that's not what we want we want this gear to turn and this to be stationary and also turn we don't want it to like orbit around so another thing we could do is constrain the z-axis of this with a different plane let's say this plane and that just means Put this z-axis on this plane and we're gonna do the offset zero right so now this can't go anywhere but it can rotate so can this okay so that is actually quite good now if you want to do a uh, a simulation for inventor itself what i would recommend is <clears throat> adding another constraint so this is the motion constraint right so let's let's try this. <clears throat> so in order to do that, we'll um, go to both origins or open up both parts and their components, right? And we'll hit constrain. 
and then motion, right? So this is an assembly for translation. We want motion. And obviously, the rotational things are given. Now, as you remember, our gear ratio was 1 to 3. So I'm going to put 1 to 3 in here. And then I'm going to hit select this, gear 1, this, gear 2. Okay, so that means if one rotates one time, the other one should rotate three times. And here are the directions that you want them to, to rotate. So let's do this because that's how gears work. Right, one will rotate this way, the other one will rotate the opposite way, and you hit OK. So now when you grab it, you can, you can see that one moves. Oh, but you see that is not exactly how it's supposed to work, so we got it backwards. So now this is the constraint that's created. So every time we create a constraint, this will pop up. So like this is the mate, this is the flush of the other ones. So this right here is a rotational. So right click. Edit. So instead of 1 to 3, if you want to do it the opposite, we'll just select 3. Okay? And that should fix it. Right? So now we have gears that are actually working just fine. However, they're not aligned properly. So what? In order for me to align them properly, I can right click and then suppress. That just means pretend it's not there. And if I hit the front view or whatever view, it will perfectly line things up for me. Now I will put this gear in this position as best as I can, right? And then unsuppress my motion constraint. And there you have it. Right? Oh, as you can see, my, my gear ratio is a little bit, little bit off. Okay, so how, how can I fix that? That just means that this is actually not three. Or one to three what I need to do is go in here and hit edit and get the exact number right so uh, if I hit calculate uh, it is actually one to three you could also use these numbers right to get the, the perfect ratio so 113 and 37 so if I go into here and I hit edit and I do 113 to 37. That's a little bit better. And then same thing. Unsuppress, line them up. Boom. Ah, there you have it. See, gears are working just fine. So now last thing, tip, if you want to import this assembly into MATLAB, uh, MATLAB does not recognize this constraint, so I would actually delete that before importing it into MATLAB. Now, so last thing I want to show you is <clears throat> that tell you is that MATLAB does uh, recognize STEP files and uh, STL files. So if you save these parts individually as STEP files and STL files, you'll be able to import them into MATLAB. So what I would do for that is double click here and then select. So let me explain that a little bit better. So if you double click a part, right, it will open, it will ignore everything and just accept the part. And then you can go here and export CAD format. And let's make that an STL file. And we're going to save that in the gears file. Remember the gears file that we made? And let's call this gear, gear number one. Boom. And let's go back to the assembly, double click the assembly. And then let's select the second gear, right? Double click here and then file, export, export as CAD format and select STL file from here. And let's call this gear number two. Ah, uh, here you can see the first gear that Save, okay? So you have two gears now that perfectly work with one another that you've tested in Inventor that you can import in MATLAB. Thank you very much.